Hello, and welcome back to Of The People. And we're going to talk more about human trafficking. And joining us, Jaco Buyens, entrepreneur, educator, author, TV personality, abolitionist, and most importantly, one of the leading voices on human trafficking, certainly in this country, if not the world. Mr. Buyens, welcome to Of The People. Thank you so much. Honor to be here. And we're, and we're honored to have you. Correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't you also serve on the anti-trafficking uh, uh, council for the White House some years ago? Yeah, under the previous administration, absolutely. And, and that administration did incredible work. Um, was the first White House to really recognize child sexual exploitation and, and take a proactive approach with the, with the non-government organizations such as, as we are to really address the problem. And, and I don't want to get into the politics of different administrations, but at a high level, how is this administration doing with trying to combat human trafficking? And I know there are many layers to human trafficking, whether it's sex trafficking or labor trafficking or other things. But at a high level, are we doing as well? Are, you know, what can we do better? I mean, this is such an under the radar issue for most people. So any light you can help us shed on this for our listeners is, I think, so very important. Yeah, look, not politicize the issue because we we go to save every child. We don't ask, mm. you know, what's the child's orientation or where they're from or even if the child agrees with me and my faith. It doesn't mm. matter. But we also have to become intellectually honest in America again. We can't deny truth, absolute truth. And the truth is that the that the current administration is doing practically nothing. Almost nothing. I mean, acti actually retroactively being destructive to some of the policies and pillars that were built over the last 10 years. Uh, so this current administration has set a precedent, which then remember, when, when a federal administration sets a precedent, it trickles down into state government. Mm, right. And we're seeing, we're seeing now the rollback of some safeguards that we fought for a decade for to be put in place in states like California that have now been destroyed, such as California canceling the sex offender registry. So what? you don't know when you buy it. Yeah, it's canceled. Cal Gavin Newsom canceled the sex offender registry of California. So, so when you take a stance at, at, at a White House level, so goes the leadership, so goes the nation. And so you're giving liberty to some of these radical factions, maybe in state government, local government, independent school districts to be radicalized. And it actually is very destructive for the fight against against child sexual exploitation. Well, and that's one of the things people said that the you know, that when um, the previous administration or in previous administrations, when they were separating children from their families, um, you know, not holding them in camps or things like that. P part of the point of that policy was to make sure that those kids were not being trafficked. And so they wanted to make sure that whatever adult they came over here with was actually a family member, that they actually belonged to them. And now uh, the Biden administration has apparently lost 85,000 ch undocumented children just into the country somewhere. Yeah, I'm so glad you look again. We're just speaking to truth here. Here's the truth. President Obama deported more people than President Trump. President Trump is the president with the most focus on security and border and the only president in U.S. history that acknowledged that children are being sold for sex. He acknowledged that from the Oval Office. He formed task forces. He appropriated funding, brought the NGOs in and did incredible work. The mm. cages, the cages that they said, you know, President Trump put children in. Those facilities were built by President Obama as part right. of his deportation program. The, President Obama correctly took a child and a father, a supposed father, separated them for 45 minutes to an hour. You ask the same set of questions of both to corroborate the story, to see, is this child in fact this man's child? They reunite them. Trump reunited them. But you must, at the border, separate, interrogate, ask questions. None of that's happening. It's mm. illegal now by Trump, by, sorry, by Biden initiative. It's illegal for CBP on the border to question a man, to ask him what? whether it is his daughter or not. There's no <gasps> questioning going on. Zero. There's no oh questioning gosh. going on on the border. 
There's, there's no search, search and verify. There's no going. Most of the drugs, the, the fentanyl that's coming into the U.S. is coming in through a, the backpack of a human slave, of a sex traffic victim, because they're not allowed to search. They're not allowed to frisk. They, they'll call it apprehension. And I go to the border. I mean, goodness gracious, we were shot at at the border. We do a lot of work there. They'll bring them in. They'll sit them down. They'll make a phone call. A white bus shows up, and they're transported to an NGO. Health and Human Services, by law, is supposed to examine every child that's crossing the border to see if they have a medical condition. Are they malnourished? None of that's happening. HHS wow. is nowhere to be found on the border. You don't know what disease is coming in. Has the child been raped in transit through the Darien Gap? Because most of them have been mm -hmm. sexually exploited. 60% of women and children are wow. sexually exploited prior to arriving to the border. None of that is happening. So to compare the two administrations from a, from a perspective of are we protecting human dignity and human life and are we preventing bad characters from sexually exploiting women and children, the previous administration – Absolutely. The current administration, absolutely not. Well, and that's the thing that to me is so frustrating is, you know, you hear these politicians saying, oh, you know, they're coming from these devastated countries and we need to help everyone. And, oh, what is the, you know, what does the Statue of Liberty say? And you go, okay, yeah, that's cool and all, but you also are now incentivizing the very criminals right. that are right. that are guaranteed to harm the people that you say you're trying to help. Look, I'll say this to you. Can you imagine? And this is a f number one. It's it's lies. The White House has not acknowledged not one time, not one time since 2020, that children are being sold for sex. Yet they have all the evidence. They know of all the children that have died, the bodies buried. They know of the rape trees. They understand. They know. They have all the intel. They look the other way because the political motive is different. It, the the mm. end justifies the means. If Karine Jean-Pierre, <sighs> the press secretary of the United States government for, for President Biden, if Karine Jean-Pierre tomorrow morning stood up in the White House press room and said the following, President Joe Biden had an epiphany last night, and he came to the understanding that children – are being sexually abused and raped and sold as commodities by the cartel. Do you know what would happen? The American public would demand for the border to be controlled and shut down. So they don't do it. They don't do it because it doesn't play into the cheap labor movement. It doesn't play into uh, the trilateral agreement that Joe Biden signed with Spain and Mexico, where he said we will take 7 million migrants before the end of his, his term. It doesn't play into the Davos crowd and the World Economic Forum movement of moving people. When people move, children are sexually exploited. That's why the Super Bowl is the number one sex trafficking day of the year. Right, because they bring in the prostitutes and their, ch exactly. and their children. Right. So you're moving. So you're moving millions of people from 180 countries around the world into our country, and you're going to want the American people to believe that nobody is sexually exploited. Come on, come on. They know if they were to acknowledge it, the general public would demand action. You know, I grew up in New Jersey and we have an expression uh, within the community that a fish rots from the head down, right? Mm -hmm. And that's really what, what you're talking about here. So Yako, the thing that I find most incredulous and there's just so many thoughts running through my head is with all this talk about slavery and, and the evils of slavery and the country was founded on slavery and all the things we talk about slavery, this is an issue you don't hear about. And yeah. just, just to frame this for, for our listeners, we're not just talking about sex slavery, right? There's, there's organ, um, uh, harvesting. organ harvesting there's labor camps there's there's and again outside the united states there are you know youth child armies that are that people are or you know brought into the military to fight battles right mm -hmm. i guess my question to you because you are such an authority on this how pervasive is this in the u.s and give i you know look we, we talk about um you know, lies, damn lies, and statistics. So I don't want to get boiled down into statistics <laughs> here, but I, but I'm trying to wrap my head around it because I did some obviously research before you came on as our guest, and I can't get any verifiable statistics on any of this. 
Mm. Yeah, you won't. The, the, the number one statistic organization that used to exist until two months ago, they lost their funding, was funded by the Fed in this realm. None of us in the, in the industry trust them. None of us. None of us trust the Polaris project. None of us. Because we know their numbers are not true. We trust numbers on the ground, numbers by law enforcement, reported cases, actual numbers of safe houses, children being needing restoration, numbers of clinical you know, therapy sessions. They tell you, Secretary Mayorkas tells you that they've lost 85,000 children. They've lost 240,000 children. They tell you two wow. and a half million has crossed. Over five million have crossed into this country. Wow. I'll give you an example. Where I'm, I, I'm, I'm closely partnered with Glenn Beck in the Blaze, and I'm closely partnered with, with the group at, at, you know, David Barton and the group at Restoring America's History. Are you aware that our founding fathers, we have a, a handwritten uh, document here. We talk about the Constitution, handwritten, where Adams is writing a rebuttal, where he writes in hand saying, we are coming here for all, all caps, men, all caps, to be equal. The founding fathers came here to abolish slavery, to walk away from a tyrant king, right? didn't come here to enslave people. Here's the truth for you. History records this. 10 million, and I'm from South Africa. I lived through apartheid. I served Mm. in the military through apartheid. I was there with Nelson Mandela. I was, I know the lies. I understand what it looks like when racism reverse. I know that that does not bring healing to a country and a land when you swing the pendulum radically. 10 million Africans, 10 million African slaves left the continent of Africa over a 350 year period and migrated. The general consensus, if you ask an American, where did they go? They'll tell you North America. That is a lie. Do you know of the 10 million slaves only, and it's one is too many, let me reiterate, but of the 10 million, only 366,000 slaves landed in North America. 5 million went to Brazil. 3.5 million went to the Caribbean, went to South American countries. 366,000 slaves arrived in America over a 300-year period. Okay? Today. Wow. Only 300. Who taught you that in history? No, Nobody. I have no. never heard a number like that before. That and is like, factual. They, they try to frame That's it factual. like it is uniquely American that no, slavery Brazil, existed. Brazil took most, more slaves went to the Dominican Republic in Haiti than came to the United States. Wow. They went to the Caribbean. Okay. Some to Europe, but 360. Now look, one is too many. Okay? Obviously. But that's obviously. not what they taught you. Now take that number, 366,000 slaves from Africa over a 300 year period. Our nation is not even 300 years old. Okay. We're, we're, we're coming in here in our 250 soon. Okay. We have five hundred thousand slaves in america as we speak but they're sex slaves five hundred thousand we're surpassing in a year in slavery sex slavery sexual brokenness deviancy forced fraud coercion we have more slaves in america today in one year than we accumulated in 300 years how (laughs) that's how disproportionate this conversation has been well, and that's people think it's it, that it's, um, you know, oh, that only happens at the Super Bowl or that could only be um, apparently Texas is the worst offender. Um, but even in little Vermont, uh, where people forget, you know, we're a border state, they broke up two sex trafficking rings. Uh, of Asian nationals in Chittenden County in the last two years. So this is Look, all over the country. Every single zip code of America has child sexual exploitation in it. And I want to make it very, very clear. I'm very thankful for Tim Ballard in The Sound of Freedom. Very thankful. Tim is a friend. That movie is doing exactly what it should be doing. It's bringing awareness. But that's not enough. People need to know what to do. How do we take action? The most, the most trafficked children sold for sex in the world are American-born children sold in America to American men. It's the American male that's driving the sex trafficking market around the world. We're the largest producer and consumer of pornography, which means we expect sexually exploitive content. We're the number one buying 
nation buying sex and we're the number one nation exploiting sex for children. God. That's on us. Why do you think the cartel is bringing kids into the country? Because we buy. Right. Well, if, if we were not buying children and we were buying dishwashers, they would smuggle dishwashers <laughs> into the country. They bring cocaine because we're the largest cocaine consuming nation in the world. Wow. They bring what we buy. So at some point, the penny has to drop here in the GOP, in the church, outside of the church, in, in the, the Democratic Party, that there is a cultural dilemma in America where we have corrupted our culture with sexual immorality. And like Sodom and Gomorrah, like mm. Pompeii, like Rome, we are falling. And we're falling fast. And that's what our movie Sex Nation is all about, is these markers in our history where we have lost it. And how do we get it back? How do we take a father and say, this is the conversation you need to be having at your home? Mm. Well, that's you need to get help. Yeah. That's assuming there are fathers in the home, which speaks to another aspect of, of the moral breakdown. Two real questions, Yako, that I, that I really want to ask. And the first, as we always talk about, is follow the money. Uh, yeah. You just mm. referenced it. So the question, first question to you is, do we have any sense of how, I mean, you know, the estimates I've seen is 150 billion. That seems low to me in terms of, you know, industry numbers, in terms of the money that's really um, at play here. And the second mm. is, I think, a broader issue, because doesn't this really also speak down, forget about breakdown of the family. It's, it's another aspect to me of war, the war on religion or the breakdown of sort of religious value. So speak to both of those, both the money side of it, because I am a follow the money guy. If you want to understand something, follow the money. But we've also had many episodes about the war on religion, both overt and covert in this country. Look, scripture tells us the, the root of all evil is the love of money. Okay. Mm. So, so always follow the money. Always. See, is a man for sale or not? And where would he compromise? At what number? Okay. The point number one. So follow the money. Yes, the recorded number is 150 billion, which, by the way, would put it in the top 10, top 10 percent of Fortune 500 companies on Wall Street, selling children and women for sex, by the way. OK, and that's tax free. So if you really go in the tax free number, then they're probably in the top 50 and on, 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 you know, you know, the Fortune 500. Wow. So it's a massive, massive industry. Now, many are complicit many are takers many are compromised in government so the money aspect is huge money transported even through general banking systems why are we not clamping down on jp morgan morgan stanley chase why are we not telling them hey we want to know anybody on your registry that either has been convicted of a child sex crime is on a sex offender list and we want to see what the flow of money is there but they're looking at everything else you're yeah, doing because it's not a gun yeah, they want to. They want to see. Else. No, it's a child. Right. You, it's a child, yeah. and children are expendable to this country at the moment. Right? Apparently it's so. diabolical. Mm. Now, now, the second part of your question. Um, look, uh, um, I, I want you to. I want you to consider this. When we look at money, and then we understand that money is a big indicator. But you look at the moral fall of a country, mm. and an understanding that we are demanding this. Uh, and then down to numbers, the fastest growing form of sex trafficking in America, form, and there's many different forms. Kidnapping is one form, okay? And that's small. The fastest growing form is what's called familial trafficking. The, the, the National Institute for Shelter Care, I'm on their board, and this is all the shelters, the safe houses, just did a study, completed a study, a two-year study, and the study depicted this, that 25 to 47% of children that are being sold for sex in America are sold on the hands of a caregiver, a family member, someone in the family, a wow. coach, someone they know. Wow. Why is that so important? The child doesn't have to go missing. The child's oh, wow. not kidnapped. There's already built in trust. When you are sexually abused by someone you trust, it is infinitely more destructive than sexually abused by a stranger. That's an abomination. That it's a is... silencing mechanism. Our last four cases. Our last four cases, and we have a 17-year-old boy right now that was sold for sex for 14 years by his father and mother, and his dad is a child psychiatrist. His what? Access to two, yep, we're investigating right now. He has, he has access to 200 children a month. <gasps> okay? This is what's happening in it's America. This is, why, this is why you're seeing mothers taking their children to a drag show. 
You're thinking, what kind of oh mother? Oh my gosh. Most likely a mother that was sexually abused, that never got healing from it, right? That has mm -hmm. no understanding, that has lost her own rudder. This is not, this isn't plain sight. It's in front of people's eyes and we can train them how to see it. So to think that, oh, it's Cambodia and it's the Philippines and it's off there and it's just the border. It's next door. Right, but, yeah, but let me they, come back. they don't, they hey, don't Erica, like that. Second. Okay. Hang on. Let me jump in. I want to come back to, is it inversely proportionate with the decline of religion? Let's call it the Judeo-Christian religions okay. yeah, in this yeah. country, because it would seem to me to be a direct correlation. It, it is directly tethered to it, and here's why. And thank you for reiterating that question. I knew I'd missed one. It, this is Genesis. It, it, nothing is new on earth, says, says the Lord, in the Word of God. Mm. We are fighting the exact battle, the exact battle that was fought in Genesis. Number one, evil is so unimaginative that Satan is calling his movement pride. <laughs> Which is, what, which, Absolutely. which is literally, which is literally what seven got him deadly kicked sins. out of heaven. Seven deadly sins. No, pride. Right. Pride got him kicked out of heaven. They called their movement Pride. We're celebrating Pride <sighs> Month. We're celebrating men riding their bicycles naked in front of children. We're celebrating uh, parents. We are not, but the country is, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so number one. And then God says what to Satan? God says what? He says, Eve, you will bear children in pain, and there will be mm. enmity, war between you, Satan, Lucifer, and the offspring of Eve, her children. It's the same fight. Because wow. here's why. Satan understands that the greatest pain he can inflict on God's heart is to destroy a child. And you destroy a child when you sexualize him. Because he can't produce offspring. He can't stop the kingdom of God. Why do you think they ask? Let, come on, guys. Let's have a conversation here. War between Satan and the offspring of Eve. Okay. So what happens? Alfred Kimsey comes in the 50s. He sexualizes boys. He writes a sexual manifesto. Hugh Hefner is his understudy. It was an understudy of, of Kinsey. Hefner brings porn. They, they bring in you know, Robert Maxwell. He goes mm -hmm. off to Jeffrey right. Epstein. And off we go. They ask you what? What is marriage? They didn't ask yep. you what is a woman first. They ask you what is marriage. They redefine marriage. Now we are what is a woman. Why? Because they're attacking the womb. Why? Satan hates procreation. He hates God's kingdom expanding through what? Through children. The innocent ones that God said, rather you put a millstone around your neck than, than lead one of these astray. He doesn't even say rape. He just say, don't lead them astray. Why? This is how I rebuilt my legacy. I say to yep. Americans, you like this country. Then invest in the youth because it is the future of this country. Well, and I so much of what so often when we see the the insanity that's going on, I I've said to my husband probably one thousand times, this feels like Eve in the garden all over again. 100%. Women got convinced that their greatest value is as an e economic driver instead of as a homemaker. We told men that they are toxic and that they are dirt bags and to disrespect us. Women have been told that being a mother is a hindrance and your baby is a parasite. And we believe it. We got sold a Hugh Hefner and selling your body um, is empowerment instead of um, a travesty. Exactly. An absolute and it's, travesty. It's like, oh my God, I, I, I feel like it's Eve in the garden all over again. Be, be, because it is. Because it is, because scripture tells you nothing is new. Now, praise God for the blood of Jesus Christ, because mm. had Christ not come. Oh, and the stream and the audio only. Oh, no, we're, we're, we're there. I am. Oh. Little technical difficulty. We, we can we, still hear you. We can still hear you, but we would I'm like. Here. I'm here. Okay. I'm here. I don't know what happened, but, but think about it this way. Think about it this way. Nothing is new. Right. This yes. is a battle of this is a battle of good and evil. This is Eve in the garden, and Eve is being deceived. So, so what has to happen? The only thing for evil to exist, good men have to do nothing, right? So, what do you do? You tell the dad, emasculate hey, them. You tell the dad, you're not in the abortion conversation. You be silent, buddy. Okay, but he was fifty percent of the equation in conception. You needed his sperm, so he has a voice. Why? Because in Ezekiel thirty-three seven, God says the following: If the watchman 
the good guys, knows of evil and does not warn, then the blood committed by the sinner is on the hands of the watch. We've got a lot right. of blood on our hands in this country. Mm. Lots. So, 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 Yako, let me, let me segue a little bit because I know we're coming to our, the end of our time with you. And number one, most importantly, where can people, our listeners, reach you? Where can they get information? Uh, this is such important work that you're doing. We want to spread this one as much as we can just to raise the awareness level. Where can they reach you and where can they get information? And talk Thank about the movie much. that you mentioned, too. Talk I about will, that yeah. Too. So, so the movie Sex Nation is a film. There's nothing controversial, exploitive in it visually, but there's hard facts. 45 interviews with industry experts to really equip the American nuclear family to defend their family, their children, take this country back from a moral standpoint. Okay, number mm -hmm. one, watch the movie. Go to sexnationfilm.com. Secondly, go to our website, helpjbm.org or yakuboyensministries.org. On that website, at the resource page, there's over 1,200 pieces of resource for the American family to safeguard their children, to protect their family, to have the right conversations, to know what curriculum should and should not be in school, to look at the 185 mm. books that are currently in school that are sexualizing children, down to letters for your principal, how to speak to your congressman, your pastor, your youth pastor, how to go take back your school board from a moral standpoint. We arm parents with a tangible action item, I can do this today. And then mm. if they need help, like a child says, hey, I've been exploited or I'm stuck in pornography, the help is there as well to help them. So take action, educate yourself, knowledge is power, and right. then move, do something tomorrow with this amazing program that, that the, the viewer is seeing now. Do something. It's not enough to know about it. Go educate yourself. And then the last thing I'll say is this. Stop abdicating our role to decide where this country goes, to government or to the church. Your mm. family, your family, God gave you as a father to steward. And if there's not a father in the family, mom in the community, you steward that family. Do not think that the school or society or the government holds your values. They do not. That was our grandfather's America. That America is yeah. not the same today. They do not. And, 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 and lastly, one problem I had with the previous administration was this. And it was repeated on loop. And if you said it, I'm sorry, I don't mean to offend, but I'm just going to be real. How many times have you heard the statement, we're the silent majority? We're the mm. silent majority. That is the most idiotic thing I've ever heard in my life. Why is the majority Amen. silent? If the majority is silent, the tail wags the dog, and you got kids exploited in the streets. That's what happens when the majority is silent. The, the majority is silent because they have been beaten and cowed into silence by political correctness, starting with the Obama administration. And you and I can have this conversation offline because that's a huge pet <laughs> peeve with me. Yako, I will make you a promise. Uh, so we're also the American Coalition, right? And our goal is to help restore America. And this, to me, is fundamental and a part of it. With your permission, yeah. and we can talk offline, we're going to put this link, the links up to your website on, on ours. And we're going to, please, we're going to, please. And, we're, and we're going to create a section on human trafficking. And if you don't mind, we're going to just link them to the work you're doing, because I can't think that we could do anything better than that, what you're already doing. It's an honor. Please, what's ours is yours. There, Look, it's, remember, I told you, one child. We go one child at a time, one at a time. And so it's worth it. And God, we must at some point stand in front of God, and he must say, well done, good and faithful mm. servant, with what I gave you. And remember, the freedom to be an American is a gift. It's a it gift. It is a gift. It, and, it, we, it, and we have to protect it. And it's and a by protecting obligation. It, absolutely. We must defend the innocent and the voiceless. Uh, so thank you, guys. You're, you're champions. So appreciate you. Thank you. Yako, and thank we, you for joining us. We do have about 30 seconds left. And Yako, would you just briefly share with our audience why you're so passionate about this particular conversation good yeah 1994 i was 18 years old in south africa that year my sister was 12 we were raised without a father three siblings i was the oldest and that year my sister was trafficked ilonka was trafficked and nobody nobody in 1994 spoke about human trafficking and it took six years to get her back and in that process when Ilonka came back and I had to learn through her eyes what men had done 
to her. And, and, and that, that kind of an evil is real. God spoke and said, not another one. And we've been fighting since. So it's 28 years and she's in this fight as well. And God's redeemed her, but it was a process. She is in that film. Her testimony is in that film. This is real to us. It's firsthand because I really was the father figure. I was six years mm. older than my sibling and I was dad. And there was a lot of condemnation on my part. How could this happen on my watch? How did I not know? But that's our story. And that's why I'm so passionate. Look, I will fight for the American children, even when their fathers won't. But I would love to see the dads step in here and help sure. the mama bears and fight this fight. Amen. Thank Amen you. Amen is right. Yako, thank you so much for joining us. I hope you will come back as there's so much more we want to cover. But thank you so much for what is, um, a for some people, should be a life-changing interview if they listen to this. Thank you. God bless you. Of course, back anytime you'll have me. Thank you. Thank you. Folks, you've been listening to Of the People with Robert Chernin and Erica Reddick. Erica Reddick. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you next week.